Yes, uh, we're starting off with working as a door supervisor. This is going to be the third module uh, in your course. And uh, what we're going to be learning on this course, we're going to be talking about uh, application of conflict management in the private security industry. Application of conflict management in the private security industry. So in this module, we are going to cover principles of conflict management appropriate to your role as door supervisors. We are also going to be talking about recognizing, assessing, and reducing risk in conflict situations. We are going to learn and understand problem solving techniques. What are the techniques that you can use to resolve problems? And lastly, we'll be talking about using communication skills to de-escalate uh, conflict. Principles. Can anyone tell me what is meant by conflict? Dispute between people. Dispute between people, yes. Different ideology, different principles. Yes? All right. Conflict is a serious difference between two or more opinions, principles, or interests. A serious difference between two or more opinions principles or interests. Please add the light sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Now, what do we understand by this? I'm going to give you two examples here. position they are. Right? If he goes there, he's going to see the same thing. He's seen. And if he comes here, he's going to see the same thing. Sit down. Right? Already, he's saying black, he's saying white. He's saying black, he's saying white. That's conflict there. Yes? If they don't change position, they keep saying no. Maybe you cannot see. Maybe you're blind. How can you tell me this is, uh, this is black when it's white? That is different opinions. Yes? Then conflict can arise because of the way we see things. Our perspectives. Our perspectives. Our understanding. Yes? Of things. Our values. Right? And this is what happens in real life situation, people tend to see things in a different way. Therefore, 
How do you manage conflict? The management of conflict <coughs> is the practice of recognizing and dealing with such conflict in a rational, balanced, and effective way. In a rational, balanced, and effective way. Situations leading to conflict, misunderstanding, poor communication, lack of planning, unrealistic and unfair expectations, attitudes, frustration, and stress, substance and alcohol use. All this leads to conflict. Many a times, if people are drunk or they are under the influence of uh, uh, drugs, they don't see what you're seeing because they are on a different level. So, since you know what leads to this, how can we avoid conflicts? Security staff often have to enforce rules and regulation and sometimes have to control the behavior of others. Yes? So you need to know, as part of your role, how conflict arises. Yes? How to recognize conflicts and how to deal with conflict, including early intervention. Preventing or reducing conflict in the workplace will go a long way towards making your working life safer and easier. The health and safety at work at 1974 provides definition for a workplace violence. And it defines a workplace violence as any incident in which a person is abused, threatened or assaulted in circumstances related to their work. It is vital that both employers and employees understand the importance of policies, guidance, and procedures. These are put in place to help keep everyone safe at work. Section 2 of the Health and Safety at Work Act, 1974, places a legal responsibility on employers to ensure, so far as is reasonably practicable, the health, safety, and welfare at work of their employees. Therefore, as a result of this responsibility being put on them, Employers must ensure they provide policy statements, risk assessments, procedures dealing, detailing what to do in conflict situations, procedures for checking and reviewing safety precautions, appropriate training, a safe environment, safe working practices, support for concerns about abuse and aggression, and support following violent incidents. On the part of the employees, the Health and Safety at Work Act 1974 also places responsibility on the employees to take reasonable care for their own health and safety, and other person who may be affected by his act or omission at work. Simply said, as you are responsible for your own health and safety, and your act or omission should not 
adversely affect the health and safety of other people. So when you are taking care of your own health and safety, you want to make sure that this does not affect the health and safety of others. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Employees must familiarize themselves with the organization policies and procedures, set and promote for both staff and customer as to what behavior is <coughs> and is not acceptable. What is acceptable and not acceptable. Employees must follow those policies and procedures. They must be aware of what might trigger a risk situation and be prepared to gather, share, and discuss information on risk situations. Employees must attend appropriate training, use risk assessment systems, plan with others what to do in risk situations. And employees must correctly report violence incidents in the workplace. How do you deal with workplace violence? Report all incidents of violence in the workplace. Appropriate reporting helps to pick up the trends or particular triggers for aggression in the workplace. Proper records may be required for insurance and or investigative purposes. Reporting procedures will be detailed in your organization policies and procedures. Using communication to manage conflict. The effective use of communication skills can reduce the chances of conflict arising in the first place. It will help to deal with the difficult situation when they occur and it will help to avoid and diffuse conflict situations. As a professional security operative, it is vital that you always act in a positive way. You can do this by being approachable, positive and constructive, professional, calm, clear, polite, smart, helpful, fair, and honest. These are all that is expected of you. So that when you are going to do this, then you are able to narrow down the chances of conflict arising. Behaviors of customers. The law is very clear related to the role of the employer and the employees. However, Customer may not be aware of the expectation as to their behavior. Companies should therefore consider displaying no tolerance to violence or more polite, we are here to help you, please do not abuse our staff posters. A lot of times you might have seen that. You can see that on the wall as well here. If you go to the hospital, rail stations and all that, you see all this being uh, displayed. All right. Stages of escalation. We have four stages of escalation. The first stage is frustration. Second stage is anger, followed by aggression and violence. Ideally, we should try to prevent customers from becoming frustrated in the first place. Using pre-planned, effective, and proactive delivery service strategies will help us with this. You see a customer who is frustrated already. Have an early intervention. Try and de-escalate the situation rather than allowing the customers to get into the second level, which is anger. 
When it gets to the second level, you might not be able to negotiate again. It might be too late. So once you cite, once you recognize that this customer is frustrated, do the right thing to de-escalate the situation. Attitude and behavior cycle. Attitude and behavior cycle. My attitude affects my behavior. My behavior affects your attitude and your attitude affects your behavior. Right? So if I want a positive attitude from you, what do I give you? Positive I give you positive attitude. So if you have a negative attitude to your customers, obviously, what do you expect from them? They give you a negative one. So it is always good for us to come across to our customers as being positive. All right? How, in, uh, how to break a negative cycle. My attitudes affect my behavior. My behavior affects your attitude. And your attitude affects your behavior. Right? And your uh, behavior affects my attitude. <coughs> and the cycle keeps going on. How do you break this? Yes? I can change my behavior and pretend to be happy. Even when I'm not. What this is telling us is, even sometimes, when we have our concerns and challenges at home, by the time we get to work, we need to put that aside and radiate a positive attitude. Let the customer see positive attitude in us. Do not say because you have issues at home or you have all these challenges, personal issues, then you bring that at work. <coughs> the person you're dealing with at work does not know what your problem is. He does not know your concern. And they don't even care about that. So by the time you try to extend that to them, then you're not doing the right thing. Pretend to be happy even when you are not. Don't allow yourself to get angry. Like I used to say, this industry we are in is a people's customer service industry. It's a customer focused industry. You need to put your customer into consideration. There are customers that will come to you, they will be very rude. Don't allow that to get onto you. Once you lose your temper, you can no longer negotiate with customers or manage the situation. Some will deliberately talk to you in a very rude way. And when you go to that level, to come back to your normal state will be difficult. So never allow yourself to get angry. Manage the abuse. Customers are going to abuse you guys. Especially when you're trying to tell them what the policies are. When they are not happy with your policies, or they find it very difficult to comply with it, the next thing is they're going to abuse you. They're going to call you names. And if you cannot manage it, you go down to their level, then there will be a problem. When someone is told they cannot have what they want, they will usually respond with first potential insult that they can think of. This will usually be about you, based on your physical attributes, 
on gender. Someone is coming to the door, for instance, with a friend, and he's got a 500 pounds shoes on him. And you are just putting on maybe a shoe box at a clock, maybe 50 pounds. And you're not telling the person, the venue policy says you cannot come into the venue with trainers. He will be looking at you and say, you, you are wearing a 50 pounds clock and I have a 500 pounds trainer on me. You're saying I can't wear it. They will start to abuse you. So you should be ready to manage the abuse. Maintain a positive attitude. To effectively manage a conflict, you must like or at least not hate your work role. Conflict situations are usually relatively brief and there are many more pleasant customers than, than there are unpleasant ones. When you like the job you're doing, the best comes out of you because you're happy. So any unpleasant behavior of the customer will just come to you as one of those things. But if you don't like your job, any little thing will get you angry. Every little thing will get you angry. You must like your job. So my advice is, don't stop on this road alone. Look at a way you can, you know, ways that you can develop yourself and get the best out of the industry. There are lots of opportunities in the security industries. And these are the opportunity you should be looking out for. You cannot just limit yourself to working at the door alone. There are other opportunities in this industry. Be assertive. If the behavior of a customer becomes unacceptable, then the customer must be told and appropriate action must be taken. The customer must be in no doubt that the decision has been made and there's no further opportunity to negotiate. Remember, there's a big difference between being aggressive and being assertive. So what I'm saying here is always be assertive when you need to be. Assertive is being fair and firm. Being fair and firm. This is the policy and that is the policy. You cannot bend the rules for some people, maybe because of their color or because of their gender or because of their ethnicity and you are not bending the rules for others. That is discrimination. That is not acceptable. Any questions? <laughs>